Well, good day, everyone. How's it going? My name's Michael, and I'm a director of photography from Melbourne, Australia. I run my own video production company named Pendula, and I wanted to take you through my thoughts on long-term use of the Canon R5 and what I've found to be really positive about the camera, what I love about it, some things that aren't so great, but I've managed to just work through those. And yeah, my overall thoughts on this camera. So let's get right into it. I have the camera with me here and uh, I run it with the 24 to 70 uh, F 2.8 RF and it's a really good combo. This stabilizes on my Ronin S gimbal and I really get a lot of great use out of it. You can get really stable shots, you can get walking shots with the combination of the IS in the lens and the body. Uh, it is an awesome uh, camera for run and gun stuff. Now, there is obviously the overheating issue, but I've managed a few options and ways to get around that. And so I'll take you through those things that I do to mitigate those issues with overheating. But what can I say about the camera? Well. In terms of image quality, it really is a beast. It, like the 4K fine obviously is incredible. The crop 4K as well is a really, really good looking 4K. And even upscale 1080p on this camera, upscale to 4K, looks really, really pleasing and is quite good. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna run some shots while I take you through these things on the camera and I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say I'm shooting in 100 frames per second or even 50 sometimes or 60 frames per second. The camera um, outside, let's say it's 30 degrees or something and the camera decides, hey, I'm gonna shut down and overheat or I'm gonna, you know, on the screen, uh, show you that I'm about to overheat and you've got like a minute left to shoot. So what I do is in those scenarios, I just don't stress out anymore whereas I used to stress a little bit because uh, you know I'm shooting, I'm capturing content. So I put it down to 1080p and then I run 50 frames per second in 1080p and the image that I get from that 1080p upscale to 4K is barely perceptible between that and the 4K, the actual 4K that I shot. Now, I don't know why that is. Maybe it is an upscaled 1080p that it's giving me. Maybe it's a line skipped 4K, so it's dropping half the pixels or a portion of the pixels. I don't know, but the footage out of this camera, 1080p, it's very clean, it's very good. You upscale to 4K and majority of people won't know the difference. Now, I'll play a little clip for you here and let's see if you can tell which of these clips cut together. It's all 50 frames a second, but it's a mix of 4K and 1080p. And I wanna see if any of you notice which clips uh, is the 4K and which clips is the 1080p. So let me play it again and you can see for yourself which ones are actually the 4K and which ones are the 1080p that are upscaled to 4K. Now, I didn't do a super scale or anything like that in DaVinci. All I did was just put the 1080p footage into a 4K timeline and then exported that as 4K. Sometimes maybe I used a little bit of sharpening, uh, but basic edits and basic color uh, and maybe you know sharp, a tiny bit of sharpening where it was needed as I would normally do. But yeah, as you can see, you can really can't tell the difference, well, I believe anyway, that you can't really tell the difference between the 1080 upscale to 4K and the 4K itself. So that's why I just haven't stressed about it. And I've actually had a really good experience mostly with the camera. You know, in shooting probably like 30 days with this in the last year or so, I've only really had a couple of occasions, maybe five I can count, uh, occasions where I've got into an overheat warning or even a shutdown uh, with the camera where it's actually completely shut down. So one of the things that is a big issue with the camera that I still have to this day, even with all the firmware upgrades and everything, is when you just finish shooting a clip, you hit the record end record button to end the recording, then you go quickly, and I'm pretty quick on this sort of thing. I don't let I kind of don't let things just, you know, record to the card and then stops red flashing and then hit the play button. But if you hit the play button really soon after you've, you've finished recording a clip, even if it's in 50 frames, I found it happens more in 50 frames or 100 frames per second, when it's still writing to the card, then I find that it freezes. And so I hit play and I'm just standing there waiting to review the footage. And if I'm in a situation run and gun, but I'm actually directing a client or directing talent to do something, and I just wanna quickly review that, then 
I'm standing there waiting for this camera to sort of do something and it's just frozen. So what I've actually found is I don't wait for it anymore. I, and this is a limitation, this is an issue. And Canon, if you're listening, it'd be great if you could look into this. But what I do now is I literally pop out the battery. So I turn off the camera, hit the off switch, and I pop out the battery, completely pop out the battery just like that. So just let it drop out like that, put it in, close it, turn it back on, and then the camera comes alive again. And so that actually has happened quite a few times on set. And that would be my biggest pet peeve of this, not even overheating, but this issue where it decides it's gonna freeze up. And it's happened since the first time I had the camera. So potentially I bought the second hand of someone, maybe it was dropped, maybe it's got an issue, maybe, uh, I don't know if there's some problem with my particular camera, but I've persevered with it and I've you know, not let it worry me too much. But essentially that's really the only major flaw is this issue where I hit the play button a little bit too quickly. So if I wait then, you know, end the record and then if I remember and wait, like, you know, five seconds, let's say, or even 10 seconds, I just wait and then hit play, it's fine. But if I kind of hit play while it's still thinking, it just locks up the camera. So it is an issue and it's something you can work around. It's something that resets itself. Every time I've taken the battery out, I've reset it, it's been fine, but it's something that does happen on occasions and I wanted to make sure that I let you know about that. But what else to do with the camera? Well, I set up my C1, C2 and C3 uh, for the particular shoot that I'm on with the right ISO and if I'm inside or outside I quickly just dial those in for different scenes and settings and so for me to get between different scenes and different settings like 50 frames, 25 frames uh, or 100 frames, it's so easy and so simple. And then if I get into an overheat situation, uh, I can easily drop to the manual setting and just quickly change it to 1080p. And so for me, it's really a game changer in the way that I use this camera for run and gun sort of shoots. And then for long form interviews, I have the Atomos Ninja V. So I use the Atomos Ninja V and then it's really, really good for that for me for long form interviews and I haven't had a problem. So people have asked me, will you be getting the R5C or are you looking at that as an option? And the answer is no. Uh, the, this is pretty much giving me everything I need at the moment on what I do. The dynamic range is great uh, for all the stuff that I do, mostly controlled situations, but even in real estate stuff that I've done, it really holds up against other higher end cameras. So I haven't really noticed the difference, but much difference really between my Blackmagic Pocket 6K and this in uh, RAW, 8K RAW, or in the Co uh, C-Log3 codec is really good for just retaining highlights in you know windows and things like that for real estate stuff that I do. So this has been a really good camera for me and I won't really be needing the R5C. And so yeah, it's an extra $1,000, 1000 Aussie or something like that for the R5C. So would that be a upgrade they'd be willing to do? Well, you know what, if I was doing a lot of long form shoots where uh, the R5C could be my A-cam for you know doing interviews and then I have this as a B cam and for a gimbal camera then with the IS and stuff then yes potentially I would get the R5C because that would give me that option but to be honest with you this is doing everything I need at the moment and more so yeah this really is an awesome camera and um, I would say that if you're a documentary shooter or you're doing long form interviews and telling testimonial stories, that kind of thing, then the R5C might be a better option for you. But if you are a run and gun shooter who does a lot of photography as well, then the Canon R5 is the way to go. Some of you will not be keen on the limitations with the overheating. Uh, so that's just not gonna work for some of you. So you need to know your process and if you're happy to drop down to 1080p, um, you know that the overheating isn't an issue in 4K crop mode. So any long form interviews that I do with the camera, I run it in the 4K crop mode and I run it with a 24 millimeter F1.4 usually, or sometimes I'll use a 3518 or a 5018. So I'm getting that lower aperture that I need, knowing that the cropped image is gonna have a little bit less compression uh, than the full frame image. I just lens up and go wider, as wide as I can. So I'd probably switch out this lens for my interviews, my set interviews. And I found it to be really, really nice. And it pairs well, I've got an EOS R that I shoot in 4K with as well. So it does pair nicely with that. Um, but I would say the color science in the R5 
and overall image and cleanliness of the shadows uh, like with noise and stuff is much more superior than the EOS R on the R5 and certainly the R6 I've shot with some footage or edited sorry some footage on the R6 as well and that is also quite a clean image so the sensor technology from the EOS R up to something like an R5 or an R6 is better and you're going to benefit from having the better sensor so yeah that's kind of my thoughts um, after long using it for a long while and I've enjoyed just using the camera and getting the results that I've got. And I was able to meet some editors who I've been shooting for a company and been sending off my footage and they've been editing that footage. And I was able to actually meet them two weeks ago and chat to them and it was really cool to hear their thoughts on the image as well coming out of the camera. What I do is I shoot it all in the H.265 internal codec uh, and then and some of the interviews I will shoot on the Atomos and you know shoot directly to ProRes but normally I'm shooting in the H.265 codec and then transcoding for them so they're looking at that footage in a high res like a 422 HQ or a 422 uh, ProRes and they're, they're loving grading that footage they're loving editing with that footage and so it was cool to hear that feedback and get really good feedback from them about the quality of the image coming out of the camera some of that is to do with my shooting as well and the skills I've got and gained over the years to capture the image uh, and to get really nice clutch footage with good framing and things like that. But it is a lot to do with the camera and its ability to just handle highlights and dynamic range in the way that it does. Even though it's not like 13 and a half, 14 and a half, 15 stops, it still handles, I think, highlight roll off really well. And in the C-Log codec anyway, it's very editable. So you can you know, manipulate highlights and shadows as long as I'm capturing all that information, all that data. And barely have I ever had to denoise any clips from the R5. Sometimes I've underexposed a few things and needed to kind of clean things up, clean up some sort of blotchy skin tones and things like that. But generally shooting in the right uh, exposure with the R5, you're always going to get a really excellent result. So that's all from me for this video. Hopefully this helps you if you are looking at getting the camera or not. And just a quick note that this video was uh, color graded with my Canon Log LUTs and you can check the link in the description below to my website michaeldrally.com and currently I'm actually offering all of my LUT packs for free. So they're all Canon Log LUTs and they'll work best with Canon Log 1 because I developed them for the 5D Mark IV and the EOS R camera systems but also you can utilize them for Canon Log 3 as well and they'll work just as well. But I am developing some Canon Log 3 LUTs that will be released soon. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Check out my LUTs below if you wanna grab them for free at the moment on my website. All of them are free, so you can go there, grab them, evaluate them, see if you like them. And in preparation for me releasing my Canon Log 3 LUTs. So hopefully you got some value from this video and thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.